Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Doing Business in Bentonville. My name is Andy Wilson, and it's so great to have you with us today. The thing that I really want to thank all of our viewers and listeners for is that you have now expanded us to 22 countries. Thank you so much for sharing, for posting, and all the work you're doing and on, on our streaming channels, Spotify, YouTube, Apple, and, of course, LinkedIn. So, again, welcome. My guest is Fritz Steiger. Fritz, welcome to Doing Business in Bentonville. Thank you, Andy. Great to be here. I'm just really honored and uh, humbled to have a part in this mm-hmm. program and to share some of my stories about Walmart and uh, get uh, get acquainted with you a little bit more. You bet. You know, uh, I'll tell you, friends. I have uh, here. I here's what I think about you. I I have admired you from a distance for years, and what you did at Walmart and beyond Walmart. And it is now, it's been so great over the last several months to get to know you a bit more. It's really an honor to know you. And I look forward to a lot more Fritz, for sure. Thank you. Okay, this guy, let me just tell you about this guy, okay? He was like the number two guy at Walmart. He he ran public relations and he ran uh, uh, PR and the government uh, assistant, and he was in Washington. He was everywhere. He had, Fritz, you had some Walton's ear. What an amazing thing in those days, in those early days. Wow. How was it? How was it to hang with Sam Walton? It was and, one of the, the highlights of my life. I mean, to be, uh, to, to be sought out and to be pursued mm. by Sam the way he pursued me back when I was like 22, 23 years old. Yeah. Uh, milk and cow. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but he really gave me an opportunity to change the whole direction of, of my life and my career. Um, you know, I, I was, uh, Sam would say, if, if, uh, if it's not merchandise and operations, let Fritz do it. So I really, it was a really um, kind of a, a startup uh, mode. And I'm a startup in, individual. I, I really enjoy entrepreneurship. And so the things that I did that mm. working for Sam were like, he knew these things needed to be done. Yeah. And we oftentimes ran into a little resistance yeah. in a few of those areas. I can't imagine, you know, because uh, when I when I joined Walmart, we had 120 stores at the time. You know, we were a big company then, so a regional company for sure. And I remember seeing you at our meetings and when I'd come to the home office for the meetings and things. And, you know, you you were the guy in corporate affairs and media relations and and you were, you were traveling the country sharing and telling people about Walmart. It's amazing that time, that so important, critical time of Walmart, where we're getting our foundational uh, uh, company moving at that point. And you had such a crit- an income apart in that, Fritz. So we just got to hear about it, man. I'll tell you. Well, there, there's so many things to talk about, but I, I like to start out talking about how Sam was able to hire me. Uh, I was I was actually milking cows with my dad. We had a dairy operation. My brother Lamar, my brother Carl were part of the operation, and and so we were milking cows out east of town. And but I was going to church mm-hmm. at First Presbyterian mm-hmm. in Bentonville, and Sam and Helen were were members there. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I was the youth director and would get up and speak and, and mm. uh, would talk and lead the kids. We'd go over to their house and, mm. you know, paddle canoes, and they, they really promoted that mm. with the young people in the church. And so one Sunday after church, Sam said, Fritz, why don't you come over and have lunch at the house? And I didn't think much about it, but mm. uh, so I went over there, and, and Jim and Lynn were there, and I think a couple of their little children at the time. And Jim, Jim's son, his wife, Lynn. Yes, and you were right. and you were how old? I was twenty three. I think twenty four. Okay. All right, and uh, so we had peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I didn't remember <laughs> that and potato chips. That was lunch, and so after lunch, Sam said, uh, "Fritz, uh, I, I have a opportunity I want to present to you. I, I, I want to offer you a job." And I said, "Well, Mr. Walton, I, I have a job. I'm milking cows, and <laughs> and uh, I said I'm really not interested. But what do you what do you have in mind?" And he said, well, we've been putting money aside in the company for the last three or four years, and we want to give it away. And I need to hire a director of the Walmart Foundation. This would be our philanthropic arm of the company. We'd, they'd given merchandise away for years, you know, in the stores, but they never had cash to give. And so he had this idea for a scholarship program. 
and he wanted me to lead that program. And I said, well, Mr. Walton, I'm very, I'm honored you, you want me, but I have no interest. You know, I'm milking cows. <laughs> We're going to do with Steigerland Dairy yeah. <laughs> what you did with Walmart. Yeah. He said, okay. So he drove me out to the dairy that stuck around, st- st- stayed around for a, a, probably an hour and asked questions about cows and about milk. And of course, you know, he grew up in the depression right. when his parents milked cows mm-hmm. and he and Bud, his brother, mm-hmm. delivered milk. Mm-hmm. And so I was always intrigued with he stayed around for so long. So I go back to, you know, he, he leaves and then mm-hmm. I see him in about three or four weeks and he comes up and he kind of nudges me and he says, have you thought any more about that job offer? And I said, no, sir, I'm not, not interested. <laughs> well, this went on for probably, I don't know, six to nine months. I can't remember yeah, how long, right, it was, right. but at least three or four times he kind of came back. Well, things started changing in the economy. The dairy business got bad. The milk prices got cut. We were in a bad position. And my brothers and my dad said, you know, one of us has got to go to town and get a job. Mm. And so Fritz, it looks like you, Walton's after you. Why don't you go back and see if the job is available? Well, I told him no so many times. I kind of felt bad about it. But when I went back, I said, Mr. Walton, I said, "Uh, is that job still available? I'll never forget what he said. He said, it is. He said, I've been waiting on it. And I said, you, you've been waiting on me? Yeah. So I went to work for the company, started the Walmart Foundation, mm. and uh, we set up a, a scholarship program. Sam wanted to give $1,000 in every community. And we were in little towns, you know, back in those days. Right. We weren't the big cities. Yeah. So $1,000 was a big scholarship. Yeah. So we set up a pilot program for 36 program, 36 stores the first year. Mm. Kind of did a test run. And uh, got it going, and then we spread it out to 360 stores the next year. Yeah. So that was the beginning of the Walmart Foundation, and it really planted in me uh, a love and a desire for education, which later led to education reform in another part of my career. Right. Right. That I was involved in. Right. So uh, it was a it was an exciting program to be able to go and to give a student, you know, mm-hmm. not the highest. Uh, we didn't base it just on academics. Mm-hmm. We based it on you know, the well-rounded student. He wanted somebody who was involved in sports and somebody that was, mm. you know, hard worker mm. and so forth. So to be able to award that in a small community, it meant a lot for Walmart. Wow. Now, how much was Helen involved in that? Um, well, I think Helen really, I'm glad you mentioned that because I think Helen really had the spirit of generosity. Mm-hmm. She was the one that really was whispering in Sam's ear or maybe not so much whispering yeah. Yeah. in <laughs> encouraging the stock option yeah. program, the employee, yeah. you know, a profit sharing program, right. but the generosity of giving money back and, yeah. you know, it wasn't well known, but, but I think she was really behind yeah. that. And we ran into some resistance from some of the top brass at Walmart, like, why is Fritz giving away money? We're trying to make money right. and put it on the bottom. Oh, I bet you did. Understand. Yeah, I bet you got a lot of resistance. But some was, of the operators to that point. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I also had the opportunity to run the Sam and Helen Walton Foundation. I didn't run it, but I helped Jim and Lynn. Yeah. That was the program that gave scholarships to the uh, children of associates. And they gave six or eight. And it was a full ride scholarship yeah. you know, to, you know, maybe $8,000 or something mm. back in those mm. days. So. You know, one of the things that I remember when I was growing up at Walmart and I uh, went to the year beginning meeting and, you know, it was always around selling, uh, Helen and Sam's anniversary, uh, around fe- February, I believe. I mean, it may have been Valentine's Day was their anniversary. It was. It was. Okay. Yeah. And I knew I, we'd always be there. And I remember Helen one time, Sam, you know, had, they came up on the stage and they presented him flowers for the anniversary and, and Sam's said, Helen, you know, you want to say a few words. And I remember this like yesterday. Helen, she spoke, and she spoke directly to the spouses, you know, for a moment in the room. Yes. And then she said this. She said, it's not what you gather in life, it's what you scatter in life that counts. Something like that. I mean, I may not be exactly right, but that was what she said. That has had an impact. That had an impact on my life. As a young leader at Walmart, for her to to um, to say that to and I, you know, just like wonder what really goes on behind the scenes that she's having such an impact. Well, you know, the the slogan I think back in those days was "We care about her." Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of that. Came oh, it was from Helen. Yeah, and, uh, 
And they really did have a love affair. Yeah. And it was a, yeah. it was fascinating to watch them. Of course, I knew them in church and they, yeah. they were really like, you know, surrogate parents. I had a great mom and dad. Yeah. But Sam took me under his wing when I went to work for Walmart and Helen at church took me under her wing mm. and she got me involved as an elder on the Presbyterian church when I was like 22 or 23. Yeah. And I said, Helen, I'm too young to be an elder. Yeah. She said, oh, don't worry about that. We, yeah. I want you. Yeah. She saw something in me. Yeah, she did. And Sam saw something in me. Mm. But, but what I was going to tell you, uh, the love affair between them is that there's a great story when, when Sam went hunting. This is 1983, I think. And Sam was going to be in Foul Furious for about three months, three weeks. Mm -hmm. And she came to me and she said, Fritz, I want to give Sam an anniversary present, Valentine's Day. And we're going to remodel his office. And I said, oh, we are. And she <laughs> says, yes, we are. You're going to help me with it. So Sam at that time had been in that office, I don't know how many years, maybe 12 or something. The carpet was was run down. The drapes were just nasty. And the old chairs that we sat they sat in were old and and so when he left, I was the one responsible for totally getting it gutted, bringing in all the new carpet and getting the chairs remodeled or re yeah. reupholstered and so forth. And um, and so she said, now when he comes, I want you to see the surprise look on his face. You've yeah. been a part of this. It's, yeah. So she called me and he came and he was wearing his orange garb and, and old Roy was there and he had his, his shotgun and he, he walked in down the hall and my office was right next to uh, uh, Loretta Bosses, which who was his secretary, mm -hmm. and so she had called ahead, and I was ready, and so she walked by, and she said, and so we walked in and uh, watched him, and the door was closed, and Sam goes in, and uh, he opens the door, and he walks in, and he says, he looks around, and he says, oh Helen, he says, I spent twenty years trying to get this office to look this way, but huh, honey, it looks real nice. It, it looks, it's real nice. And she said, "Happy anniversary!" And so I forgot to say that, but she said, "Happy anniversary!" And that's uh, he was he backed up, and he was she was the one person you know that that he just really adored and would listen to. Mm -hmm. And she could speak to him about things that nobody no else could. Else could. Yes. That is such a great story. It was wonderful to be a part of that. Oh, he look, then he looks over at me, and I go. <laughs> and off the, he came in my office the next day and he said, you're okay. I know Sam, uh, yeah. that Helen wanted you to help with that. that and I'm glad you're that, that is so, that's such a great story. I know you have a lot of Sam stories now. So I, we, we want to hear some more Sam stories and cause you know, there's just, it's just so wonderful. Now, um, you were giving the money away. You were going to Washington. You were, t you, you were traveling and talking about Walmart and 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 the culture i'm sure the people the towns we were in now uh i know I, I know you were giving interviews around the country so did 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 you and sam um talk about those kind of things how did that how does that work well sam knew that we needed to be in first of all washington uh mm -hmm. i started out walmart, with the walmart foundation mm -hmm. but he knew that i had an interest in politics and government mm -hmm. And he knew that I could speak and, and mm -hmm. get up in front of a crowd. And, and so he let me be kind of the, he was grooming me more to be a, more the corporate affairs person. Right. right. So he said, go to Washington and just, we don't have any issues. But he knew he had the foresight to know that at some point, you know, and today, I don't know, they've got three or 400 people probably working in Washington. Sure. Yeah. He knew that we would need to be present in the, in the nation's capital. And so I would go around. And just introduce myself to the congressmen and senators from the seven states at the time we were in, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe 300 stores. And I would tell them, I'm from Walmart. We have X number of associates in your district, and we just want you to know we have an impact, you know, on mm -hmm. what's going on there. So he let me start the, the government affairs program, which I enjoyed. About quarterly, I would go to Washington. Mm -hmm. And then he knew that we needed a political action committee to help elect congressmen to mm -hmm. and senators to the u.s congress and so he signed the letter it was a he wrote the letter and and i sent it out to all the the top management and and he was asking them to voluntarily contribute and so we raised a hundred thousand dollars and we were able to give money to candidates and and so forth but um the other thing that was happening at the time is that walmart was only 300 stores but yet walmart was beginning to get some national attention mm -hmm. Uh, people were starting to notice, you know, this company called Walmart down in Bentonville, Arkansas, mm -hmm. and this guy named Sam Walton. Mm -hmm. So 
Wall Street Journal, Forbes magazine, put him on the front cover with a, you know, by 1983, mm-hmm. he, was, he was the richest man in America. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so people were calling. And one time, one story uh, that I like to tell is, is that there was a young reporter from the Los Angeles Times who had traveled all the way without an appointment, knocking on the door and said, I want to interview Sam Walton. And Sam came to my office and he said, for instance, this kid's, you know, he's, you know, he was probably 28, 25 or 26. And he said, he's come all the way from Los Angeles. I don't have time. Sam's response was, I'm running a company, you know, yeah. you go talk to him. That's why I hired you. Yeah. And so I went out and sat down in the lobby in those old plastic chairs when we had the, you remember the, Oh, I remember those. Remember those days? I remember those days. And so he and I sat there and I said, look, this, I'm, Mr. Walton just doesn't have time to talk, but he wants me to chat with you. And this is all off the record, but I'll, I'll kind of give you some background. Mm-hmm. And so we finally got around to the proverbial question of, well, Walmart's putting these small town merchants out of business. You know, you're gouging, you're, 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 you're really uh, making it hard on those, on those little businesses. Mm-hmm. And so I, um, I said, look, here's the deal. Those guys can compete if they want. It's typical. You know, the, the five and dimes put the, the general store out of business and the general store put the, the, the peddler out of business. So used to, you know, it's a transformation. I was trying to explain to him. I said, look, I said, those downtown merchants have been gouging the consumers for years, high prices, no service. And Sam's coming in with variety of, of merchandise and low prices and, mm-hmm. and so forth. And about three weeks later, Sam comes walking into my office with a, Los Angeles Times, front page, Fritz Steiger, junior executive, says, small town merchants gouging the consumer. <laughs> and he said, now, Fritz, he said, I understand what I agree with you. They are, but you've got to watch your words. And he took me to the woodshed in a very nice way and said, you got to choose your words carefully. And so it was a great lesson for me in public relations <laughs> to choose my words carefully and, and uh, but, that uh, is such a great story, Fred. <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, the chairman, the chairman could take us to the woodshed, you know. <laughs> and I, you know, I remember, you know, I was uh, when I I came to Benville in 1987, and I was a regional vice president, and I, you know, I'd been in the stores all those years as manager and district manager, and I remember sitting down in the auditorium on Friday when we'd have those management meetings, yeah, and you know, and Sam wanted to know. A report where you, where were you what the stores looked like what yeah. competition looked like yeah and you know and again 20 you know i i don't know i was 29 years old or something you know and i remember he would turn those eyes to you and when he looked at you you knew you were going to get a question asked yeah yeah and and I'd already been up about five hours, and that was a seven o'clock meeting, getting ready for that seven yeah. o'clock meeting. Because yeah. you just didn't know no. what he was going to ask. Well, everybody in those meetings out in the old warehouse, you know, yeah. there were tables that were set up. And then he was, he, was there, he went down. And yeah. I remember one time, it was I was probably, you know, my first or second year there, and I was sitting on the back row with Lee Scott. Yeah. I was director of the Walmart Foundation, and he was director of transportation. Right. Of course, went on to be CEO of the company. That's right. So Lee had a real good sense of humor. And so something was said, and, and Lee was leaning yeah. over, and he, he said something to me, and we both just burst out <laughs> laughing. And I remember Sam said, uh, now, Lee, uh, Fritz, what, you want to tell the rest of us what that joke was back there? We, we want to know what, what is, which are, uh, the last time I sat next to Lee Scott. And, yeah, you got to run from him. <laughs> No, those were intense great. meetings, and you yeah. had to be ready. Yeah, because Sam would get yeah. to me. Fritz, tell us what's going on. And yeah, you'd stand up, and well, I was in Washington this week, and I met with all these congressmen, and he wanted everybody to know. Yes, what I was doing, so that they would be in full. Yeah, and you know, it's a very good communication. Tool. We did, we did a great job. And not only those those Friday meetings, you know, where we the management got together and we all talked from operations, merchandising to everything, transportation, logistics, all of that, legal, everything. Yeah. And we talked and we really, it, it was a communication and it was our job then to leave and go communicate that down, you know, that to our, 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 our direct reports. Yeah. And they, it eventually got to the stores. That's how we did it. And it worked. Yeah. We all communicated, yeah. and it began with Sam Walton. Yeah. To your point, yeah. he wanted us all to know 
what was going on in the company. Yep. And uh, <clears throat> Saturday morning, so, okay, we had Saturday morning meetings. Yeah. So um, those were quite something, weren't they? they, they Talk were. about, do you have any, uh, uh, any stories around a Saturday morning meeting or any times uh, you could share with us? Well, first, I didn't have any direct reports. I was a one man yeah, show. Yeah, so I didn't, I didn't have to go yeah. back. When, I, when the meeting was over, I was done. Yeah. Whereas you guys had to go and make yeah. your phone calls. And That's stuff. right. But I do remember we would start those meetings at 7 o'clock, and Sam would, he yeah. got on a, a health kick one time, and, and he brought in a, a oatmeal cookies. He was convinced that we would, <laughs> we, would, uh, we would all be healthier if we would eat oatmeal. And so... And that was about the same time that uh, that uh, Rob Voss and Jim Von Grimm mm -hmm. uh, were into tennis. They played mm -hmm. a lot of tennis with mm -hmm. them after mm -hmm. the meetings were over. I never was a, a big tennis player, but they uh, together went into his office one morning after a Saturday, mor Saturday morning meeting, and they said, Mr. Walton, we think we need uh, that Walmart needs a fitness center so that uh, employee he was on this health kick anyway. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they went in and talked to him, and uh, he ended up talking to Helen, and they gave a million dollars in 1983. And so Rob and Jim and myself flew out to Golden, Colorado, and looked at the Coors uh, mm -hmm. Fitness Center, their uh, associate fitness center, and Halliburton and Dallas is where, where we went. And so as a result of that, you know, the first Walmart fitness center was built out on highway 102 mm -hmm. right and uh it was the it was the beginning of of really helping to helping associates become mm. more healthy and right. get in better shape and so yeah that became very important to him but yeah uh, it did um you know one of the things now the new one just opened uh, have you been to the 40 years yeah yes yeah. i got to go i got yeah invited to i did yeah i got invited unfortunately i was out of town oh. but i didn't get to go but i haven't seen it but i've seen photos of it uh, I, I'm definitely going to go, uh, but sure, the is. next generation of fitness center now is so, and it's just their commitment to health. Yeah. And, you know, Sam was, Sam was, he's extremely focused on health, yeah. you know, and he would talk about it yeah. and, and he would, he would yeah. sometimes talk about it and point people out that may even <laughs> to be healthier, right? Well, it's interesting <laughs> because he was concerned about health care, you know, he yeah. had the, the cancer towards the end of his life right. in the early nineties <laughs> and. And uh, his uh, son, John, was very focused on trying to help find a, a cure for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wasn't there, but I've seen the video, the old video of Sam two weeks before he, he died. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a very clear video, and he was not in very good shape. But he'd been all over the world, I'm sure, to different hospitals mm -hmm. and doctors. And mm -hmm. and the one statement that he made, and, and that goes back, you know, almost 30 yeah. Five years. That was 30 years ago where he said, we've got to do something about the cost of health care in yeah. the United States. Mm. And now, of course, Walmart has been working at that and they're making great progress. They are. And and what what Alice Walton is doing around the health care, her focus now yeah. with that. And, and you know, uh, I just recently toured a group of 20 something people at one of the local Walmart stores in you know, Northwest Arkansas and has a health clinic. And, you know, I was pointing out that, you know, that's, the, you know, the different services this health clinic offered and the prices for this. And then you'd had the optical center next to it and a pharmacy. And I said, one of the things Walmart is very still focused on is Sam Walton's vision and dream was to bring health care, lower the cost of the health care. And it's great to see what Alice is going to pick that up and do no telling what with it, which would be wonderful. Exactly. I think mm -hmm. it's going to have this same dramatic uh, uh, disruptive impact on American healthcare that Walmart has had on retail. I love what you just said. Healthcare needs a disruption, and that's exactly what I believe that, that's going to happen. I hope that's what happens. Well, I, I love the word disruption. I love innovation and uh, entrepreneurship, and that's really what I've been about. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been involved in a lot of different uh organizations and businesses and opportunities uh, that have been disruptive. Right. And, uh, and I've recently written a book uh, called Divine Disruption because I believe God has been involved in my life. Uh, and, and part of that has been in disruptive ways to bring about a better way of life. My passion is to help people have better lives. And, and of course, Walmart's, you know, very famous for 
you know, making people's lives better and lowering the cost of merchandise and so forth. Mm -hmm. But uh, the book uh, really is a memoir that talks about my uh, career starting on the dairy and mm-hmm. moving to to the Walmart world, and then you know, my po- the, my involvement in politics and and uh, my involvement in the public policy arena, as well mm-hmm. as real estate, and and my most recent uh, career uh, endeavor has been in the area of helping people find capital for companies that are early stage disruptive mm-hmm. companies and mm-hmm. so forth. But one of my really exciting uh, uh, um, parts of my career was when John Walton got in, interested in uh, what I was doing down in Texas with uh, school choice, mm-hmm. uh, trying to help parents uh, be in a position to be able to choose the best schools for their children, mm-hmm. particularly back in those years, 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. We were focused on the inner city schools of children uh, that were stuck in trap schools that weren't great schools. And John had a strong compassion and a real uh, desire to help those parents be able to give their kids. Mm-hmm. He knew he had mm-hmm. been given an opportunity that most people never would have. Mm-hmm. He wanted to share that. He spent lots of his money on trying to bring about reform in the public policy arena. Mm-hmm. And so he and I partnered back in the mid-90s, and and uh, I worked for about seven years with him in trying to help bring about reform um, First of all, through the private sector, just mm-hmm. people giving private money mm-hmm. to demonstrate uh, to the legislature that mm-hmm. parents want to have a, a choice in where they send their kids to school, but they didn't have the money. So we provided scholarships, and and then uh, eventually it began to get uh, catch on at the state uh, legislative uh, mm-hmm. arenas. And so now we've got probably seven or eight states that are Mm-hmm. that are offering um, educational savings accounts where, like in Arkansas today, most people don't know this, but Sarah Huckabee was able to get legislation passed as a result of what John uh, mm. helped fund and mm. uh, what we did back in the mid-90s. Every child in Arkansas who's in school has access to $7,000. In Arkansas? In Arkansas. Okay. And there's other states doing the same thing. Okay. $7,000, um, is a, you can use it to homeschool, go to private school, or public school, mm-hmm. whether you want tutoring or you need to buy a mm-hmm. computer. Mm-hmm. And so the idea is to make all schools better. It's mm-hmm. not to tear down one system or the mm-hmm. other, but it's to give parents a choice. Mm-hmm. And John Walton was very focused on that. And unfortunately, we lost John mm-hmm. in 2005 to mm-hmm. an airplane accident. Right. But uh, his impact on the world of educational reform will be mm-hmm. his legacy. Mm-hmm. That's that's wonderful. I'm so glad you you spoke about that season in your life. Uh, you know, I know in, in my research, and it's 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 it is, uh, and I I encourage our viewers to to research you and see the work that you and John and others, and that you have laid these foundational principles and 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 uh, on. And now in Arkansas, you know, we're we're having we're reaping those that hard work that you and John and others did back in those days around the, you know, the what, Texas public policy, right? Yes. yes. Right. So yeah. that's wonderful. Fritz, what an interesting life. And you're still working. You're still giving back. You're still focused. You're get up every day. Now I know that uh, you mentioned that you, that you're doing some things uh, on the entrepreneur area. Um, is there anything um, else you would like to share about that or to, with our viewers? Well, one of the things um, after I stepped down from the world of nonprofits back in the, I was involved for about 15 years in the late 80s and through the 90s uh, up to 2001, uh, I got involved in the real estate de- business and I was a developer and mm-hmm. I got uh, uh, the opportunity to build some, some really nice uh, subdivisions here in, in Bentonville, Northwest Arkansas. One I live in today is, is the Arbors uh, at Deer Crossing. It's over on I Street across mm-hmm. from the Thaden Airport, and it's a condominium community. But uh, following the crash of 2008, uh, it changed the direction of my career once again. Mm-hmm. And so I began to look at what are the assets, what what's the equity that I have accumulated over this career of mine where I've been in all these different kinds of political, we didn't talk about the political arena, but I've done a lot to help in a couple of campaigns to help mm-hmm. 
um, uh, elected the United States Senator. I worked on the George H. W. Bush campaign in, in 1979 and 80 when I was in college. And so m- what I realized is that I had a, 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 pl- a plethora, is what George H. W. Bush used to call, uh, of, of uh, relationships of people who had not only given money to these causes, mm-hmm. like school choice and public policy reform and, mm-hmm. and so forth, and, uh, but they were also investors. And so I began to uh, look at how I could take uh, companies that were needing capital. Uh, I wasn't a registered broker dealer, licensed, uh, but I had these relationships mm-hmm. with people all over the country who had given millions of dollars to help low-income kids, mm-hmm. public policy people. And so uh, I began to receive requests from different companies that were involved in mm-hmm. um, medical reform, medical devices, uh, you know, breast cancer a diagnostic that just going to again disrupt new innovation. There's so much in America, uh, you know, ingenuity is mm-hmm. is just key to American prosperity. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I always am on the lookout for those kinds of companies that are going to make a difference and mm-hmm. change the world. And so, uh, my job has been to be a master connector. Mm-hmm. I, I have relationships all over the country mm-hmm. with people that are venture capitalists, that are private equity, mm-hmm. family office, just wealthy individuals who God has just humbled me with the opportunity mm-hmm. to build relationships with those mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. And so I find, uh, I try to match those people with opportunities in, mm-hmm. in the business world, mm-hmm. with companies that need, and p- companies are always needing capital. And so my motto is, I connect people with opportunities mm-hmm. and the resources. Okay. So there's always an opportunity that people have. New ideas in Northwest Arkansas is just full of mm-hmm. great ideas that are mm-hmm. going to change the world, not just in the supply or retail world, consumer world, but mm-hmm. in all areas. Mm-hmm. And we're just, that's who we are, not just yeah. in Northwest Arkansas, mm-hmm. but as Americans, we have that, that right. entrepreneurial spirit. And there's always a need for resources. Right. And the people have the resources or they have the ideas. So I love connecting. Mm. That's my joy. That's yeah. my passion is being able to put those people together. Mm. Wow. That's so awesome. It's, it's just, uh, thank you for sharing so much uh, about your beginning at Walmart. And um, I'm, I definitely want to hear more Walmart, uh, more Sam stories. I'm sure you have a lot more. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, working at Walmart, you know, people ask me all the time, you know, how was your career at Walmart? And I said, well, here's how I'll say it. I said, there, no matter what position you had, there was not an easy chair at all. Every chair is hard. No matter what you do at Walmart, it's hard. It's hard work. It's demanding. And, and, but, but I would do it again. Yeah. Because of the people, number one, but the learning and the expectation and the and the values that that drove decision making inside the organization and and all, I would do it again. I was I had to just like you. We had the opportunity to work for the greatest entrepreneur, no question. Okay. And but also to learn from other great leaders and people that Sam would bring in and to teach us and to speak to us and to introduce us. What a great career we we've had and yeah. and I'm so happy where Walmart is today. I think Doug McMillan and his team and all of them are doing such a wonderful job today of leading the company. Uh, and it's uh, you know when I walk through stores, distribution centers or or wherever it it makes me happy that we had a little piece of that early on. Yeah. 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 You know, that, yeah, there's no question. I think Sam was well, probably the greatest merchant yeah. there was. He loved merchandise, yeah. but he also was open to innovation and yes. disruption. He, and I, I like that about him. Yeah. And you mentioned entrepreneur. Yeah. And and back in those days, yeah. you know, he, yeah. what I loved about him is he brought me in. He said, Fritz, this is the idea. Yeah. He gave you enough rope to go yeah. out and, and just do what you he, needed to do he did. and left you alone. But if yeah. he saw that it needed a correction, yeah. he wasn't hesitant to come in and correct you, as <laughs> yeah. I've already but, shared. Yeah. But, this but a, what a beautiful thing to be able to go and to, to create and to, okay. and, and to make a difference in people's lives. Okay, Fritz, Divine Disruption. Yes. Your book. Okay, you have to come back I've, and talk about this book. I, 
I want, we, we want to share your stories and we want you to share with us about your book. So please come back and spend time with us. You, your, your stories today, um, your passion come, is coming through, it just come through today, what you're passionate about and your desire. And I see that fire still in you to do so much. Yeah. And um, we we just really appreciate you taking time to share all so much with us this morning, and um, we want to hear more from you. Is it, can you do that? I would be happy to. I'd love to talk about my passionate uh, passion. I, I'm an old. Uh, I come from a long line of Steiger storytellers, yeah. so I love like to share stories, and I've got a lot more to share. Well, everyone, our our guest Fritz Steiger, uh, from the dairy farm to Walmart and beyond. You did it, and uh, and you're still doing it. And we we really wish you the best. And I well, I want to thank all of our viewers and listeners today. Thank you so much. Uh, it means so much to you. We'd love to hear from you. Check you can you can message me on LinkedIn, uh, and uh, you can or you can message me on our website. Uh, our website's dbbnwa.com. That's where you'll find all of our um, podcasts and many many articles around retail omnichannel and servant leadership. So again, Fred Steiger, thank you, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you again. Same here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Have a wonderful day.